Education. My name's Ellie. I'm Rebecca Pelling. It reduces the cost. Um, it also reduces clinician burnout, which is like a real pressing issue across the globe at the moment. So patients are able to access like special care from all over the globe that they may not have been able to access prior to the utilisation of technology. And secondly, if we take a look at like, the provider side of things, they're utilising uh, workflow efficiency tools. We're actually seeing even virtual scribes now, so sometimes they don't even have to write down the notes themselves. And then lastly, like on a more kind of holistic perspective, looking at the healthcare system as a whole, we're seeing, I don't know, a multitude of like preventative healthcare tools, which is really empowering patients to take control of their health. So the first pillar is bodily injury. The reason we call it bodily injury rather mm -hmm. than medical malpractice is because bodily injury, when healthcare services are provided virtually, doesn't just come from healthcare services. It also comes from technology errors and emissions and cyber events as well. Mm -hmm. The second pillar is technology errors and emissions. So the financial loss from technology failure, or maybe your software doesn't live up to expectations. Mm -hmm. The last one is cyber events. So cyber is a key exposure for healthcare companies. They're holding loads of patient data, so what are the latest digital healthcare trends that we're seeing? Um, I mean, the fast development of technology has really seen the utilisation of augmented reality, virtual reality, as well as artificial intelligence um, being kind of deployed and utilised within like, the healthcare practice. It's just the adoption of the online and in-person model. So this hybrid kind of mode of um, treatment which providers are utilising. Do you think that the use of artificial intelligence in healthcare is the future? It's certainly a powerful tool and it's re it really is revolutionising the way healthcare is being kind of delivered. But so long as it's used effectively and appropriately um, and the actual data, the algorithms are um, accurate and they're non-biased, then kind of the opportunities of utilising AI are really endless. I think one of the weirdest ones I've seen, it's essentially where you can take a 15 second selfie and it will capture your blood pressure through looking how the light flows between your, through your skin. Cool, so how would we describe digital healthcare in five words? Um, unique. Uh, revolutionary. Emerging risks. Uh, I'd probably say necessity. So what's our appetite for healthcare? What do, we, what do we love to see? It's extremely broad. We try not to say anything's particularly out of appetite. Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, remote patient monitoring or like digital health kind of platforms with their network of providers. Mm -hmm. M-Health apps, I think they're, they're quite nice risks. Um, obviously you've got the artificial intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. um, Virtual reality, augmented reality, yeah. as we've already said. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>